everyone, welcome back to Paperbacks and Ponytails. I'm Katie, and as you can tell by the title, it is a giant library book sale haul, and this is the last one for the year. So after this, I'm going to try really hard not to go to any more library book sales until at least next summer. They usually kind of slack off a little bit in the spring, and there's not too many, so nothing until summer. That's my goal. But I have a giant pile. I'm sitting on the floor and the pile's on the floor, so it's not as tall as last time, but it is pretty tall, and if you couldn't tell by the title, I don't even know what I got. <laughs> um, it was a very strange library book sale. I went to this library last month and had a great time. This time I think it was mostly the cast-offs from that sale, so there wasn't anything great. There's like no popular books, not a whole lot happening. It was all adult fiction, so there was no YA, no middle grade, so that was probably another reason why I didn't do so great. I did get some historical fiction and a couple of interesting things. I don't even know what they are, so let's go ahead and get started. If you're into um, an interesting haul, stay tuned for that. Okay, so the first book that I got in our library haul is it's called Stacy London The Truth About Style and it was a book sale last week so I pretty much I needed to fill my bag because I paid five dollars and so I got let's see how many I got it looks like 15 books I got in the bag sale my mom got I think two or three so I put I let her put those in the bag because I really honestly didn't find any that I really 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 liked so Thankfully, it was only $5, and it was a donation to the library, so how can you go wrong with that? And you never know. Some of these could be complete gems, so if you've read any of these, even if you liked or disliked them, just let me know down in the comments, and I would love to know your opinion. Okay, so first one, Stacey London, The Truth About Style, and I just thought it looked kind of fun. I guess it just talks about the style, what, what things work, what things don't. It looks very much like full-figured woman, which for now, that's great, I think. So just talking about like what works, what doesn't, why this works, why this doesn't. So pretty cool. So yeah, it talks about like plus size woman and what outfits might work for you. I think it goes by months too, because this one says June, unless that's like the lady's name, which it could be. Hey, there's a quote by Madeline Langle in there. <laughs> Oops, I don't know if you saw that, sorry. The lighting isn't great today, the sun's going down even though it's like only like 3.30, but it looks like snow weather out there. But yeah, so that's the first book. Kind of interesting, I thought this would be a nice like coffee table book maybe. Who knows? So there's that one. I'm trying to figure out where to put these books, okay. So the next book that I got, I think I saw this book at the library one time and wasn't sure if I wanted to check it out. But it is Funny Girl by Nick Hornby, and it's not like the movie with Barbara Streisand, which is like one of my favorite movies, but I, I like the cover. I didn't even read about it. So it says, though she's crowned Miss Blackpool in 1964, Barbara Parker doesn't want to be a beauty queen. She wants to make people laugh like her heroine Lucille Ball. After returning the, glittery, the glittering crown, Barbara leaves her family behind in North England and sets off for London where she works behind a cosmetics counter when she's not running off to casting calls. Hmm. Sounds good. So, yeah. Kind of sounds interesting. I don't know if it's going to be, like, clean humor or more adult humor. I'm hoping it's more on the clean humor, but we shall see. And I can always give it to a little free library if I don't enjoy it. All right, so the next book that I got was a cover pick, and that is Sweetness Number no. 9 by Stephen... Eric Clark or Eric Clark. That cover is really cute. I love the pink explosion. That would actually work for a prompt. Stay tuned. I am starting a TBR game next week. I am super excited. It is a brand new game. I did all the designing myself and this would go great for one of the prompts that I have. Hint, hint, explosion of color. <laughs> okay, so this one says... It's 1973, and David Levereux has landed his dream job as a flavorist in training, working in the secretive industry where chemists create the flavors for everything from the cherry in your can of soda to the butter on your popcorn. 
While testing a new artificial sweetener, sweetness number nine, he notices unusual side effects in the laboratory rats and monkeys. Anxiety, obesity, mutism, and a generalized dissatisfaction with life. David tries to blow the whistle, but he swallows it instead. Oh, no. Okay, so I don't know if he takes it, but... Hmm. Okay, so kind of interesting. I don't know if the sweetness number nine is going to come up later on in life. Um, not happy with, of course, like testing on animals and stuff, but maybe he will go and rescue the animals or something happens, but I'll try it. All right, so the next book that I have in my pile is The Girls by Lori Lanzens. And again, the cover is really cute. I really like that cover. Love the flowers. Those really pretty white flowers. I don't know why, but I love like white and yellow flowers. I think they're some of my favorites. So it says, since their birth, twin sisters Rose and Ruby Darlin have been known simply as the girls. Raised by Aunt Lovey, the nurse who took them in after their mother abandoned them, they have lived all their lives in the small town of Lefford in an old farmhouse bordered by cornfields. This is the story of their shared life, two sisters who are ordinary in most respects, but who have a relationship of profound and unmatched intimacy. For Rose and Ruby are conjoined twins, connected inseparably, facing the world side by side. Wow, okay. I'm excited to read this one. I, as I said in previous videos, contemporary is not my strong point. I prefer a little bit more, a little bit more um, plot-based driven rather than character driven, but this sounds really good, so I'm excited for this one. Okay, the next one that I got, which another cover pick. <laughs> Most of mine are cover picks, especially if I don't know what to get. So this is called The Case of the Love Commandos by Tarkeen Hall. And again, like really pretty aqua and red colors. And I guess it's part of a series. It's a Vish Puri novel. And I believe it takes place. Where does it take place? It's a contemporary Romeo and Juliet story set within India's caste system. Private investigator Vish Puri becomes embroiled in a high stakes mystery involving one of India's most controversial commodities of love. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so uh, I love learning and reading about different countries, so we'll find out if we like it or not. Kind of sounds interesting. As I said, the cover is really cute and fun, so I'm hoping for a good mystery. All right, the next book that I got is a hefty one. So if I ever need a book that needs to fill an over 500 page book, this would work. <laughs> this is, let's see, The Story of Edgar Sautel by David Roblowski, but that's hard to say. But um, it was an Oprah book club pick. I don't really follow um, celebrity book clubs, but they might have some good ones. It is a bestseller. I've never heard of this book, but it sounded really good. So it says, born mute, speaking only in sign, Edgar Saltel leads an idyllic life with his parents on their farm in remote northern Wisconsin. For generations, the Sautels have raised and trained a fictional breed of dog whose thoughtful companionship is epitomized by Almondine, Edgar's lifelong friend and ally. But with the unexpected return of Claude, Edgar's paternal uncle, turmoil consumes the Sautel's once peaceful home. Hmm. Sounds interesting, but another contemporary, a little bit of a historical fiction, I think. I'm not sure what year this takes place, but it kind of sounds like it could be like maybe the early 1900s, possibly, or mid-1900s. So, okay, so I got that one. And then the next book that I got was The King of Lies by John Hart. And I think this is a standalone because it says a novel on the bottom. So I'm hoping it's just a novel and not part of a series because I have a hard time finding books and series sometimes. But it says, a year after his mother's death and his father's mysterious disappearance, Jackson Workman Pickens, known to most as work, is still finding the fallout from his tortured past. His law practice is a shambles, a far cry from the legal empire that his father, Ezra Pickens, left in his care the day he vanished. His socialite wife, Barbara, is content to spend her days at the country club, and both work and Barbara ignore the passionless nature of their failing marriage. Work's life is almost pleasantly unfulfilling. And it sounds like it goes into like kind of a mystery type thing. Okay. It could be kind of like a... um. I was going to say like a lawyer type mystery, possibly, so, did I say lawyer? It's not for sure, I, oh, legal, okay, so legal, 
kind of legal mystery. So I'm not a huge fan of legal mysteries, but you never know. It could be really good. And I'm losing my ponytails. <laughs> I can't be ponytailless if my name on screen is paperbacks and ponytails. <laughs> then you realize there was sliding out of my hair. Somebody's going to mention your hair is falling out. <laughs> That's what I get for not washing my hair today because then it becomes really shiny. I did wash it yesterday, but like, if I don't wash it every day, it becomes really slippery. So ponytails do fall out if I don't pull them thread. There we go. <laughs> okay. The next one I got is probably one of the only ones that people would know about, but it is Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. And I've never read it. I have not watched the TV show yet, but a couple of actresses that I like are in there. So I might give it a shot if I can find it like at the library later on in the future. But so kind of interesting. I've never read a, a book by her, so I thought I would give one a go. This is also a really big book, almost 500 pages. <laughs> so this one could also be used for a big book. So it says, sometimes it's the little lies that turn out to be the most lethal. A murder, a tragic accident, or just parents behaving badly. What's indisputable is that someone is dead, but who did what? So, interesting. I'm excited. I like this cover, though. I think I've seen different covers of this one. I think I might like this one better. I can't remember what the other cover looked like, but that's the cover that I have. Then the next book that I got, sorry, just looking at that book, is The Paris Wife by Paula McLean. And I thought, actually, this was a... Oh, it's snowing outside. My window's right over there, so I just looked out and it's snowing. But I thought I had... A different copy of this one and it was in paperback so I got this one and I have The Lost Wife which I still need to read. This is The Paris Wife so it is a different book than what I own but again a cover by and I do love historical fiction so I'm hoping to really like this one. It has deckled edges kind of fun fun edges. Sometimes you like them and some people don't like them so <laughs> but it says let's see Chicago 1920, Hadley Richardson is a quiet 28-year-old who has all but given up on love and happiness until she meets Ernest Hemingway and her life changes forever. Following a whirlwind courtship and wedding, the pair sets sail for Paris where they become the golden couple in a lively and volatile group, the fabled lost generation that includes Gertrude Stein, Ezra Pound, and F. Scott and Zelda Fitzgerald. Hmm. So interesting. So Paris, Ernest Hemingway, famous author. So yeah interesting. I think there's a prompt actually in a group that I'm in that calls for a book based on a real person so that would work. I can't remember what I'm using that one for but I already have a book picked out for that. Anyways the next one that I got sounded really good. It is The German Nurse by MJ Hollows and again another cover by. That cover is really pretty and it's a historical fiction I believe World War II and it says her past could kill you. Guernsey, 1940, as war storms through Europe, soldiers and young children are evacuated from the islands, leaving their parents and loved ones behind to face the invading German army on their own. Hmm. So, yeah, I'm excited. Okay. I really do like historical fiction. I've really been enjoying it. I have been reading quite a lot lately, so it's kind of been depressing me. So I'm definitely glad that December's coming and I'll read a lot of lighthearted Christmas books because I need a little bit of happiness right now after all the historical fiction I've been reading lately. Okay, and then the next book I got, this is the only, um, the only copy from the library. They, they have, um, copies that they get rid of and put into, into their book sale. So this is the only one that I got from the actual library. And it is A Whisper of Peace by Kim Vogel Sawyer, and it is a Christian fiction book. And it is a novel, so I'm guessing and hoping that it is not part of a series. I don't believe so. So that's good. It looks like all of her books are standalones. So that's good to know. Okay, so it says, ostracized by her tribe because of her white father, Lizzie Dawson lives alone in the mountains of Alaska, practicing the ways of her people, even as she resides in the small cabin her father built for her mother. She dreams of reconciling with her grandparents to fulfill her mother's dying request, but she has not yet found a way to bridge the gap that separates her from her tribe. Sounds really good. I'm excited. Ooh. Okay, so an Alaska book. I have read a few books set in Alaska, and I've always enjoyed those, so hopefully that's good as well. All right, and then I have three more books. 
And this one, this was another cover by, and it just looks really, really good. So it's called The Lost Journals of May Dodd and Molly McGill Strongheart. And it's a novel by Jim Fergus. And it looks like a friendship between maybe a white woman and a Native American. So I'm excited. Okay, so it says, oh no, it's the last book in a trilogy. I didn't even know that. It says a novel. This is the final installment in the 1,000 White Women Trilogy. No. Oh, no. They didn't have the other books. I really thought, honestly, since it said it was a, a novel, that it was a standalone, not part of a series. And now, now I have to go find them. Hmm. Okay. Well, apparently, I can't tell much about this book because <laughs> it's the third book. Oh, no. Okay. So let's see if I can say anything, really. So I guess um, the president is bringing an opportunity to exchange 1,000 horses for 1,000 white women with the goal of marrying them to his warriors and creating a lasting peace. So these women recruited by force in the penitentiaries and asylums of the country gradually integrate the way of life of the Cheyenne at the time when the great massacres of the tribes begin. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to get the first book first, but this sounds really good. So I'm excited. But... <laughs> I didn't realize that that was part of the series. I wish they had them all. I would have grabbed them all. All right, and then the next book that I got, I think this might be Christian fiction, I think. Yeah, I think it is. So it is A Treasure Deep by Alton Gansky. Gansky? Um, but it says it's an award-winning, or he is an award-winning novelist, and it is blurred by Jack Kavanaugh, which is one of my, dad fa my dad's favorite Christian authors. So sounds good. It says, incalculable wealth awaits, but is it worth the cost? And let me see if this is a part of a series. That would be so sad, wouldn't it? <laughs> but, I mean, I'm going to try to, like, go through all the books that I own and find out what is a series and what isn't. So that way I know which ones I'm missing. I don't want to be sad if I read a book that's not part of a series. It doesn't look like it is. Okay, so it says, the wealth is unbelievable, the impact on history immeasurable. The danger, the danger unimaginable, and Perry Sachs is just the man for the job. It had started as an effort to save one man's life. It became a project more important than anything Perry Sachs had ever done, more significant than anything he ever could do in the future. In a few hours, he would return to the spot that very well might change the course of history. It would be dark by then, but that didn't matter. This was an around-the-clock operation. Sounds interesting. Ooh, I'm excited. And hopefully it's a standalone. <laughs> Okay, and then the last book that I got is a historical fiction, and it's called A Separate Country by Robert Hicks, and it's a really pretty cover. It's really pretty, so it looks like, the soldier, looks like a soldier hugging his wife or a girl, so let's see what this one's about. So it says, a stranger in a strange, beautiful, and confounding, and confounding town General Hood is ready to find happiness and comfort after losing a war and becoming one of the most controversial generals of the Confederate Army. Crippled by wounds of flesh and spirit, he meets and marries an extraordinary young woman who loves and accepts him despite his failures, especially his own part in the loss of thousands of lives under his control. As Hood struggles to build a family and a business with Anna Marie at his side, adversity and despair continue to beset him. Hmm. Sounds interesting. So it must be, it sounds like it's after the war. It doesn't say what war, though. I'm guessing, like, the Civil War? Yeah, Civil War. Okay, it does say. It. But, yeah, so that is the last book in my giant library haul. Okay, so I'm trying to hold them all up. There's too many to actually hold for me, but here is most of the ones <laughs> that I got. Yay. Super duper excited for a library haul. And... So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe down below and like this video because I'm new to the BookTube family. I'm so excited to be here. I have plenty of videos planned in the future as well as, of course, the TBR game next week, which I am so excited to be starting. And I don't know if I want to share the title with you or not. No, we're going to wait. We're going to give a little mystery, but it is a card game. And it has to do with a very popular comic book, so... That's all I'm going to say. Not, not a graphic novel. And, well, 
Yeah, there are graphic novels based on this, but not anime. Definitely comic books, so stay tuned for that. It is going to be tons of fun, I promise, and I'm very excited for it. So stay tuned for a Christmas TBR as well as a fun game. Thank you for staying and joining in with me.